resumes today. So I am not an expert on resumes. I'm not an expert on making resumes. But in the position that I have had for about 10 years, I have had the opportunity to look through so many resumes and applications. And I thought it would be a good idea to just make a video on some things that I have seen over the years that I liked and maybe things that I thought could be improved on to make the person looking at your resume look at it and say, wow, this is a good candidate for the position. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Melissa and I make videos weekly on my life, motherhood, and money. Today we're talking about resumes. I think it definitely goes along with money. It's about making money and for a lot of people that means putting in your resumes, finding a job, and working at that job. There are definitely people who don't have to put in their resumes for their job or they own their own business or work online. There are a lot of different things, but if you are one of those people that is about to create a resume and you want some tips, here are some of my tips. Like I said, I am not a professional. These are just really my opinions. You may have different opinions. People who look at resumes obviously look at different things, but these are some things that I think would improve um, the readability of your resume and the way it looks and kind of help it stand out without standing out too much. So you have to start somewhere, so find a template in Word. There are tons of different templates and I'm not going to tell you which one I like better. But I will go through a few things uh, throughout this video of some layouts basically of where I like to see things and how much of things I like to see. Uh, I like information but not too much information. So I do like the very simple format of resumes. Ones that aren't too jumbled but have good information. Short but informative is the goal here for your resume. Also font is something to take into account. I do kind of like a unique font. Times New Roman is good, but if you can find something that is very classy, but also a little bit different, that kind of stands out from the crowd a little bit. But don't go too crazy. Don't do any cursive fonts or hard to read fonts or really anything too out of the norm because then it will kind of take away from the information that is in your resume. Also, don't make your font too small and don't make it too large. If it's too small, it's kind of hard to read, especially if they still like to print out the resume. It's very small to read on the computer when it's printed out. If you make it too large, it kind of looks not professional and is really the only way I can describe it. It needs to be, I would say, you know, the 11 or 12 font. So what I look for, obviously, make sure your contact information is up to date at the top. It's very frustrating when a resume is not updated and the contact information is not correct and I can't get a hold of the person. Plus, that gets you out of the job already because they're not able to even get you information about the job or ask for a interview. Then I really like to have a section at the top describing the person's strengths and key experiences or qualifications. If you can tailor it to the job that you are applying for, if this is a very special one, definitely go ahead and tailor it to the things that you would need for this position. If you are mass applying to things, you're not obviously going to be able to do that, but kind of give those strengths and key experiences based on a job that you are looking to get. Then the next section is going into your job experience and history. I like a very clear start and end date. If it is a current job, you can do your start date uh, month and year and then current. 
but please make sure you're updating your resume before you send it out. One thing I do not like to see is a resume that says a current job and then when I end up talking to them they say that they left that job four months ago and they actually have a, another one or they left it four months ago they don't have a current job. I really just want correct information so that I am able to look at your resume and be able to come up with questions and things that I want to talk about in the interview. It also shows that you actually put time to make sure your resume was updated before you sent it out. When it's not current, it does send that message of you just sent out your resume, you didn't do any work to update it. It doesn't send a good message. So like I said, listing a start and end date, month and year, I like to see. And then the position that you had and the company that you worked for. Then I like to see just a few bullet points of the tasks and responsibilities that you had at that job. Again, the goal here is to be short but informative. And then I like to see a small section at the bottom of schooling and certificates. This is pretty straightforward. I've never seen any that are like long and lengthy, just short but informative again. Then the last tip that I have for you is to save your resume as a PDF instead of sending it as a Word document. When you save it as a PDF, it locks in your format and it doesn't make it wonky if they open it up on their phone or sometimes even if I open it up on the computer it gets kind of wonky if you don't actually download it into Word uh, plus you know when they're looking at it not that anyone's gonna like change your resume but I like to just lock it in make sure no changes can be made after you send out your resume and the format is just kind of locked in basically. It just makes everything look very clean and professional. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you learned some things from my tips on resumes. Let me know in the comments if you look at a lot of resumes, what you look for, if you've ever helped a lot of people make resumes, what you tell them to do. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.